Chris Tyson. Chris Tyson is the person who works for or with Mr. Beast on his channel. You probably all will recognize him if you watch Mr. Beast. And what you don't know is that in 2017, he put out a series of tweets. Now, again, yes, this is in 2017, so years ago, but I don't think he has been on the public record apologizing to the Muslim community or retracting these egregious statements that he made. <clears throat> so first one, here you could see uh, an event that occurred, a very catastrophic event. Uh, it was very, very heartbreaking. And he, for some reason, feels it's fit to post that, you know, don't say you love the anime if you haven't read the manga, inciting that, oh, it's Islam that did this. Not political warfare, not the wars that were waged in the Middle East by the West, not hateful, spiteful ideology that's backed by political reasons, not, Islam, not religious ones. But yes, let's just throw it down to religion. Next, we have him tweeting about what happened at the Ariana Grande concert a few years ago, saying, why the bleep do we even take Islam serious? It's an old backwards religion that hates anything different and treats women like bleep. Why do people still accept it? So in a tweet, this is funny, in a tweet where he's saying Islam doesn't accept anything, he's completely rejecting all of Islam and all of the Muslims. A very hateful tweet to fight a hateful religion. What is this? Someone put out a video about him, uh, about about Chris becoming a, a, a woman now, identifying as a woman and saying it's going to be a problem for Mr. Beast. And this is what Mr. Beast replied. This is getting absurd. Chris is in my nightmare. He's my friend and things are fine. All this T-phobia is starting to piss me off. So how come this T-phobia is pissing you off when it comes to your friend? But his own or their own Islamophobia in 2017, there is no reprimanding of that. You didn't say anything about that. You didn't call anyone out for that. Unless you had a private discussion with them. I don't know. There was nothing done. There was no public apology. So why is, you know, why, why is there this, this discrepancy when there's someone you work so closely with? Now, I think it's too much to push Mr. Beast for something he has like basically nothing to do with because it's not him. It's not his life. It's not his decision. So I think people need to back off on him. But I wanted to call this out because I do think it's a discrepancy um, that he calls one kind of phobia out and not the other, one kind of discrimination out and not the other. So I think that is fair to hold him accountable to. Everything else, and aside from that, I don't think people should try and cancel Mr. Beast. They've been trying to for so long. I think he does a lot of great work. He's done so much more than a lot, uh, a lot richer people have in the past, a lot more successful people you know, have done in the past. He's cured or helped cure a lot of blind people. Um, through through paying for their medical procedures. He's done a lot of good, and I think people just want reasons to hate on him. And I think that's absolutely absurd and messed up. Uh, so I think we should, within what's reasonable, have this discussion about him and about some of the claims that Chris has made. Inshallah, starting next week, we'll have a call-in show every Wednesday. So stay tuned for that, inshallah. Because um, it would be nice to get some people on here to, to chat mm, respectfully. bro. About this topic, yes, yes, yes. yes. Is there more, bro? Everyone. Um, I think it's best that we take a few comments and end off the stream here. We've discussed a lot and sure. made a lot of points, okay. And sure. we don't want to delve too deep into anyone's personal life, that's true. Yeah, I like that. You know, you, you're not insulting, you're not making fun of, you're not doing anything like this. You just you're calling a spade a spade, you know, you're, you're saying how it is, yeah, and it, it has to be this way. It has to be this way, especially in the day that we live in. And just, uh, you, you get the picture, bro. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Speaking of calling a spade a spade, one last point I want to mention, in light of everything I've mentioned before, is I think the worst part about liberalism and liberal governments is they don't care if you hurt yourself. That's why some of them allow, like, you mm -hmm. to, you know, like, assisted sui. Gotcha. Right? They don't care about you. You can drink yourself until you're offed from this world. You can you, really, they, they don't care. If you're in the middle of the street with a knife or something, yeah, you've you got a bunch of cops pointing their guns at you. Some of them are nice, some of them are mean, someone's trying to help you, some don't care. They're just trying to protect the public or whatever. That's why they, they pull their gun and not a taser. But, you know, with everything else, they don't care what you do to yourself. You can mess yourself up in the, every way to Sunday. And it doesn't, they don't care. As long as you don't push religion onto anyone, literally, as long as you don't push mm -hmm. religion or strict ideology onto anyone, they don't care. So 
that's something to keep in mind when you're evaluating these liberal ideologies and uh, your way of living. And by the way, this is why Islam is a lot more superior. We can, inshallah, discuss that maybe on next week's stream. Why Islam is superior inshallah. than the Western way of inshallah. life. Inshallah, yeah, inshallah. What a shame, man. What a shame, Chris. May Allah genuinely guide everyone, bro. I mean. Allahumma, I mean. I mean. And as a cherry on top, like I always mention, Europe was a dying nation. Yes, Europe was dying, east and west. They were at war with each other. They were dying. And the Islamic way saved them because they translated all the Islamic books and the Islamic method and Islamic law and Islamic philosophy and Islamic science and math and, and uh, all this stuff. And they translated it into their language and they took it and they adopted it and then they ended up uh, progressing themselves. The Age of Enlightenment would not have existed without Islam. We would be technologically regressed by 300 years if it wasn't for Islam. We wouldn't be, have MacBooks. We'd have typewriters right now if it wasn't for Islam. You wouldn't be seeing the stream. You'd be. You'd have to come all the way from wherever you are to come see us discuss in person. With all due respect, I would love to educate Chris and anyone who has that mindset on what Islam actually believes because you can't really blame them uh, unless they intentionally refuse to look into Islam. They're taught something, uh, and he probably went through it himself, you know, experiencing that day in September. Um he probably he was a probably young boy. He experienced it himself, and maybe he was traumatized by it. But what we need, inshallah, is to educate people with love and compassion, and be nice and merciful until given a reason to be harsh, and then we can be harsh. But there's no reason right now, inshallah. So I don't want to see anyone insulting anybody. And with that being said, I think inshallah we are safe to wrap up.